these are the ultimate SDR blue light killer settings. So this is gonna work on your PS5, bro. Okay, Xbox, PC, Nintendo Switch, to watch movies, whatever you're doing, okay? And these are fine-tuned for BFI. So you can use OLED Motion Pro, black frame insertion on this LG OLEDs. And of course, I'm going to explain you the settings so you can, you know, tweak it to your own displays. You can use the same criteria, the same, you know, a strategy that I use just in case that your TV is a little bit different. Okay, but if you just copy these settings, it should work very nice. Okay, you just try, give it a try, see if you like it, and let me know. I am definitely enjoying a lot this latest blue light killer settings because my eyes they just my eyes love <laughs> no blue lights okay i mean we still have blue lights you can see here this looks blue <laughs> this is clearly blue we have blue lights but it is greatly reduced so the color temperature is a lot uh warmer and my eyes is just love that i mean it's tough for me <laughs> to go back to more accurate settings. So these settings are not accurate, but as you can see here, they are very bright. This is my Pioneer Kuro Elite Pro 151 FD with a max out contrast, okay? Contrast in 60, so it doesn't get any brighter than that. And I have the ABL on the service menu max out to 200, okay? I'm actually going beyond 200 because the actual ABL was below, it was 193, so I raised it to 207 to actually get ABL 200 on this Pioneer Kuro. So this is as bright as this plasma gets, and you can see here with black frame insertion on my CU1, look how bright this is, <laughs> okay? So this is bright, it is awesome, it is very colorful, see? OLED Motion Pro High, <laughs> okay? OLED Motion Pro High, make sure you see let me move the camera so you can see the entire screen. Yeah, you can see it now because I'm going to show you all the settings. So I want you to see the entire screen. So let me show you the settings, okay? Explain you what, what we're doing here. So you can fine tune it on your own TV, but you can just start by copying what I'm doing here. So I'm using Game Genre Preset FPS, okay? And the reason is when we use this game genre presets, so other than a standard, we can get more sharpness when we adjust the sharpness slider here. And that is very nice, especially if you're playing on a console and you have like a blurry TAA game and on the console you don't have a way to fix that blurriness, this is what you do. You can increase this, this uh, sharpness to 10. And it gives you a sharper picture. It just looks fantastic. But this only works, increasing the sharpness here, only works to give, to give you a sharper picture if you're using FPS mode. If you use a standard, it gives you the opposite. It makes the image softer. It gives you like free anti-aliasing. So if you use a standard and you're looking to reduce the shimmering of the game, you can use that sharpness slider in 15. Okay, so standard sharpness, sharpness slider in 15. But the other thing that we're doing with this FPS game genre preset is we are increasing the color saturation. Okay, so because of that, we have to reduce the color depth. And I'm gonna show you that now. So make sure that you change this black and white stabilizer to the default 10. Okay, otherwise you're gonna get a washed out picture with this game genre presets, okay? So you see OLED Motion Pro higher, if you have a C2, C3, uh, G2, G3, just use OLED Motion, 60 FPS, 60 Hertz, which is what I'm using right now to have side by side with the plasma, okay? So let me show you the rest of the settings. So we're using game optimizer mode for the best input lag, of course. You see here the brightness is max out, contrast at 97. See that screen brightness at the default 50. 
and I am changing this peak brightness to high using the color control app on a PC. So now I'm going to post the link in the description of this video to one of the videos where I show you how to change this peak brightness to high on SDR. This does not void your warranty, okay? This is just a shenanigan from LG not letting you change that. So you can change it on the PC for any of the HDMI inputs you are using, okay? So even if you are using a console, you, you can change this setting on the PC so it works on the HDMI input that your console is using. Link in the description of the video so you see how to change that. So you get more brightness. Also, Gamma 2.2 here. And this is where the magic happens. So now the color saturation, this color depth, we have to reduce it for two reasons. Because of two reasons. One, we are using that FPS game genre preset, which is increasing the color saturation. So you're going to get more clipping, okay? So with that game genre preset and the contrast on 85, you get no clipping, okay? With the default color saturation. But because we are using that game genre preset and we are increasing the contrast, the colors are clipping. So we have to reduce this color depth to 43. So now that's not a problem because the color saturation we are getting here is as saturated as it gets. So this is vivid mode, okay? It doesn't get more saturated than this. This is as colorful as this TV can get. If I increase this color depth from 43 to 44, I get clipping. And it's very simple to see. Just open on YouTube, link in the description of the video, you open a color clipping test pattern that has red, green, and blue. And you see this box is flashing and that's that's how you test that you are not clipping the colors, okay? That's one way to test that you're not clipping the colors. So we have to lower this color depth to 43 because I am also using color gamut and native, okay? So native color gamut is not accurate. What we are doing is we are going beyond Rec. 709 on SDR, okay? So you get more vivid colors, okay? more saturated colors. And this is important and necessary when you are increasing all the OLED light and all the contrast because you get this white sub-pixel dilution effect and basically the color saturation goes down. When you increase the brightness that much, the color saturation goes down, okay? So those are the settings and that's why. Now, warm 50, okay? We want to get the color temperature as low as possible, warm 50. And this is what we're gonna do, a two-point calibration. So this is the most important thing here. Two-point calibration, we're going to lower the blue to minus 50, okay? So no blue, <laughs> okay, as little blue as possible. Minus 50, the blue, and the green, minus 20. So now, why? And this is my recommendation. So even if you're gonna do your calibration, you know, start this. Have this as, as the starting point. So what I did is I use the color temperature meter app on my cell phone. And I make sure when I lower this blue that to the minimum, so you lower the blue to the minimum, that's for sure. Then what I did is I make sure that I lower the green enough to get the same magenta to green balance. Actually, I like it a little bit lower than the factory uh, calibration because the factory calibration is looking a little bit green to my eyes. So the skin tones are looking a little bit green. So what I did is I lowered it just a little bit below the factory calibration, okay? So I have magenta to green balance 0 0.003 but almost 0 0.003, so I got almost dropping to 0 0.002, okay? So just right there, 0 0.003. So now on your own cell phone, the magenta to green balance might be reading a different value. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is have warm 50, basically filmmaker mode. Use filmmaker mode, use 
the zero to 255 pictures that I'm going to share with you, link in the description of this video so you can download this folder that has 266 pictures with the entire grayscale. Okay, so those are full screen pictures that you can use to calibrate using this color temperature meter app. So use filmmaker mode with accurate settings and see on your cell phone what is the magenta to green balance reading. Okay, if it is 0 0.003, then that's what you want to keep with this calibration because when you lower the blue, you will see that that magenta to green balance goes up. And instead of being 0 0.003, it's now going to be 0 0.005, for example, something like that, or 7. And you realize, okay, I have to lower the green to keep that same magenta to green balance. And that's very important to get a skin tones that look okay. Okay, we're not talking about accuracy here. We're talking about something that looks good, okay? So uh, that was my criteria. And this is the most significant change. This is what makes the most the biggest difference. So now on top of that, I am doing a 22 point calibration that you can also copy, but ideally you want to do this 22 point calibration yourself. Okay. So with this 22 point calibration, the goal is two things, two things I want to accomplish here. One, I want to increase the visibility near black. I want to reduce the gamma. Okay. So because I am using OLED Motion Pro. So I want to get more visibility near black, okay? So now, to, uh, to accomplish that, to get more visibility near black, what I do is I go to each signal level, to each percentage of signal level, and I increase this brightness, adjust brightness level to 10 clicks, okay? So by doing that, uh, somebody who is a calibrator told me, that this is like going from gamma 2.2 to gamma 2. Okay, so in that way you get more visibility in your black. So what I did is each signal level percentage incre increase brightness to 10. 2.5, 5, you see increase brightness to 10, all the way up to 100. Okay, all the way up to 100. If I go here to the last one, 100, you see, in adjust brightness level to 10. If I increase that to get more visibility for all Motion Pro. So now, the second thing that we are doing here on this 22 point calibration is we are trying to uh, smooth out to make the color temperature consistent across the entire grayscale. So now, what was the color temperature that I got when I reduced this two point calibration, uh, when I reduced this blue to minus 50? I got a reading on my cell phone app on that color temperature meter app, I got a reading of 5950K, okay? Almost 6000K, okay? So the accurate D65, if, of course, you need the, the exact coordinates for, for D65, but D65 is supposed to have 6500K, okay? So this is warmer than reference for sure. So that's what my phone is reading, 5950K, so regardless of the accuracy of that measurement, what I want to make sure is that my phone is reading the same 5950K across the entire grayscale, okay? And I am accomplishing that with this 22 point calibration because what happens is that the high end, the higher end of the grayscale is very consistent, but then when I start dropping down, it becomes uh, warmer, significantly warmer, and that doesn't look good. For the picture quality to look the best, you want to keep that same color temperature across consistent across the entire grayscale. So this is what we did here. Uh, 22 point calibration, let me show you the tweakings that we did. So let's start from the bottom. 2.5% per, uh, signal level, nothing. On the red, green, and blue here, zero, nothing. Then let me increase it to five. And now you see the tweakings that I did. I lowered the red to minus three, okay? So you see, when you lower the red, you increase the color temperature, okay? So it looks cooler when you lower the red. And why lower the red instead of increasing the blue? When I look at a gray slide and it looks red to my eyes, I think, okay, I should lower red <laughs> instead of increasing blue. 
and I much rather lower on the negative side if, if possible uh, but I don't want to touch the red on the higher end of the grayscale but on the lower end I think it is okay because I actually see that the gray slides on the on the near black it looks reddish okay so that's why that's my criteria so you see here I lowered the red to minus 3 on the signal level 5% I increased to 7.5% and then I lowered the red to minus 1 green 2 blue 2 and you see the same I just brightness level to 10 let's go to signal level 10% we keep red green and I increase the blue to two so because it was looking too warm so I have to increase that blue to two we go to signal level 15 I increase the blue to five okay green and red zero and that's in my specific TV ideally you test this on your own TV you do the calibration yourself and this is just like um, like an example okay with my own TV but give it a try see if it looks good on your TV blue 10 on this signal level 20% blue 10 green 0 red 0 and you see again I increase the visibility uh, the brightness with that let's go to signal level 25 again you see this 10 here 0 on the red green 2 blue 10 go to 30 you see 10 the, uh, the brightness in 10 red 0 green 2 blue 10 35 red 0 green 2 blue 10 40 percent signal level red 0 green 0 blue 10 45 red 0 green 3 blue 10 50 percent signal level red 0 green 3 blue 10 55 percent signal level red zero green zero blue zero so I didn't increase anything I think I didn't increase anything else only the brightness this adjust brightness 10 all the way up the entire grayscale but I didn't change anything else after that okay only the the brightness but as you can see here I have nothing on 55 only the 50 was the last one okay that's it those are the settings let me see if I am missing anything that's the calibration and they are working to the, together the 22 point calibration is working together with the two point calibration oh the other thing okay this is optional but I am using it right now okay on the service menu on SDR if you want to get more brightness you can change a setting that is called module HDR link in the description of the video so you see a video where I show you that you see that it is an option you can change there is an option it's called module HDR that is by default it is in normal okay module HDR under OLED module HDR so if you change this option from normal to on module HDR on that gives you more brightness on SDR but less brightness on HDR okay so if you are gonna be using HDR a lot and you don't want to have to access the service menu just leave it at normal because you don't want to turn that on for HDR because you're gonna get less brightness okay but I have it right now on and it does make a difference okay it does make the image brighter but still even without that option it still looks significantly brighter than the plasma okay significantly brighter it looks fantastic <laughs> let me tell you that this looks amazing my eyes can be watching this and I can be playing games all day long with this settings because not it is not nasty okay it's, the colors look fantastic I can see blue this, this is blue it looks blue to me <laughs> it looks fantastic but it is not like my eyes are not getting that strain from the, from watching this and it just looks so good to my eyes that it is yeah it's difficult to go back so we do need those nasty blue lights to get the best picture quality okay let me be clear about that you need those blue lights you do need more blue to get the best picture quality okay but my eyes 
right now, looking at this thing, my eyes don't care about the best picture quality. My eyes care that, okay, I can play for three, four hours, no problem, okay? After I finish playing this, I can go and watch a movie, do whatever I want. It's just no issues, see? Because I ha it has less blue. That's why I'm sharing these settings. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to love these settings because it just looks so good to your eyes. Uh, but yeah, module HDR on is an option. You can also use it. And in terms of uh, burning risk and all of that, of course, we are max out, maxing out all the brightness. Of course, you're going to increase the risk of burning. But two things. One, OLED Motion Pro is going to reduce the likelihood of burning given the same settings okay so let's say i turn off all in motion pro here it is going the tv is going to be more likely to burn in okay so if i come here and this is gonna be ice searing right now if i do this <laughs> if i do this okay and maybe the camera is going to actually i have the camera iso in auto so the camera might be adjusting to the to the tv so you don't see that difference that I see in front of me. But this is eye searing, okay? This is just too bright, <laughs> okay? So if you compare the burning risk between this with those settings and high, using high, the burning risk goes down significantly, okay? And the second thing that is going to reduce the risk of burning is that I am reducing that blue significantly. So when you do that, you get less brightness. <laughs> just by reducing the blue lights you are getting less peak brightness and that is measurable you can measure that using a colorimeter and you will see that the peak brightness goes down significantly okay so the risk of burning here is not the highest or anything like that this is okay that's why i think it is fine and i would even recommend you to just go to the service menu and turn that module hdr on at your own risk of voiding the warranty and all of that, but uh, not really. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with a warranty because of that. Uh, but do it at your own risk, I do it, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, I don't think I'm gonna have a burning issue the way I use my TV, the way I you know, have a high contrast on windows and I hide the task bar so there is no static elements on the screen at any time the only moment where I have static elements is when I am playing a specific game and I play like 30 games at the same time. So, I mean, I've already beat this game. I have all the weapons already. So you can see I beat the game already. So, but I change the games all the time. So I don't care having static elements and I'm going to play a different game that doesn't have those static elements. So I'm not concerned about burning, but it, it is up to you. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions if you have any questions. I think these settings are absolutely amazing. And the best thing is that this works for all platforms, okay? <laughs> so I don't have to, yeah, for those people who ask me, hey, does that work on my PS5, my Xbox? Oh, yes, this works for everything, okay? Even to watch movies, if you want to watch movies or something like that. Um, so yeah. I mean, for movies, you don't need to use this OLED Motion Pro High. It's not going to work. For movies, you have to use OLED Motion Pro Medium d 10. OLED Motion Pro Medium. Uh, that's the only thing that works. Um, or don't use black frame insertion at all and just increase d a little bit if you are okay with increasing it in less than 10. Uh, so, yeah. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions. <laughs>